Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another stock pick of the day. Today we are going to take a look at Ally. It is a bank out of the financial sector. It is December 19th, a Monday first stock pick of the day video for the week. It's going to be a short week, at least for me. I don't have to work on a Friday, so I'll be putting these out like I always do Monday through Thursday, maybe Monday through Wednesday. Depends on what I have going on Thursday afternoon. Might try to spend some time with the kids. But we are going to take a look at Ally Bank today. It is a bank that I personally use. This is where I have my uh, brokerage account, my main brokerage account, dividend growth investing account that I cover on this channel. So let's jump right into the video. And if you want to know more about them, www.ally.com. We're in the business of putting people first and we and we've been doing just that for over 100 years. So another company out there that's been around for over 100 years, they are a Detroit-based company, or at least they were. I live in Michigan, uh, so this is one near and dear to my heart. They were originally founded by General Motors. They were the company that uh, did all the GM financing, and then they did a spinoff there whenever all the banks had issues back in the day. So if you want to know more about them, again, www.ally.com. And like any other bank, they you know provide all the the same banking checking savings my both my daughter's uh custodial accounts are with them my like i said brokerage account so all of the major banking options that you would have with any other bank ally offers as well their top 25 financial institution 189 billion under asset, uh, assets under management and 10.5 million total customers And now for the reason we are taking a look at them, they were down 4.40% on the day. We are talking about Ally Financial, ticker ALLY, out of the financial sector. Closed the day out at $23.47. Looks like in the after hours, at least uh, a little after five, whenever I started doing some research on what companies were down today, they are still about uh, flat in the after hours, 23.47 there. 52-week range as low as $23.32, as high as $53.83. So they are right up against that 52-week low. They bust through it. They may drop uh, significantly lower, and we'll see if there's any estimates for lower uh, on the next slide whenever we look at that one. Average volume, 5.2 million. Today was 6.5 million, so a little more volume today than average, but probably a lot of selling. You can clearly see that sell-off here. Looks like about till about midday, a little bit of a recovery, and then further sell-off, right? It was down even further at one point and then leveled off there at 23.47 to end the day. Market cap of 7.009 billion, a beta of 1.24, so it is more volatile than the overall market. Again, you can see that volatility. PE ratio 3.91, but again, for banks, you want to go in and look at their financials, uh, statistics. Yahoo Finance is where I pulled this information, not affiliated, just where I like to go for information. But if you went to this tab here, statistics, you know, go to Yahoo Finance, look up Ally, click on statistics. What you want to look at for banks is price to book. You'll see it right at the top uh, under this tab here. And their price to book is a little under one. You want one is, you know, pretty much fair value or a little over one might be fair valued depending on the bank. Anything under one is typically undervalued, right? But you also want to go into their financials, look at free cash flow. You know, look at, are they growing over time? Is, is free cash flow growing? The other things you want to look out is their payout ratios. We'll see that here in a minute. But this is one, again, I'm uh, heavily invested. You'll see that as well. I am investing in Ally myself, not just where I keep my money, but I am actively buying shares in the company. But I'll show you that in a minute. So earnings per share is $6 per share. Earnings date, the next one is around January 20th. Four dividends, $1.20 paid out on the year. They do pay out quarterly, so divide by four. We'll see that quarterly pay payment here in a minute. I believe it's $0.30 cents, uh, per share. 4.89% dividend, very nice dividend. And as this pulls back, that dividend yield actually gets a little higher. Now, I want to touch on yield real quick. I don't recommend chasing yield. Just because you have a high yield does not necessarily mean to buy a stock. But if you find a, a stock in a good company, right, that has pulled back, like Ally Bank, for example, or like Intel or HPQ or several others, that has a higher than normal yield, that's another thing you would see if you went to the statistics tab. You can go down towards the bottom of this tab and you would see their five-year average dividend. If their dividend is above, right, their average, like right now, 4.89% is above their five-year average. That means, according to the dividend uh, theory, dividend payout theory, that they are undervalued, right? That's a quick way to kind of see, are, there, are they paying higher than their five-year average? Then they're undervalued. If they're paying lower than their five-year average, that might speak to some 
uh, overvaluation, right? So that's just one quick way to look at it. It's the dividend theory, right? Uh, X dividend date, October 31st. Actually, they have another one coming up. We may see that in the next slide. And their one year target, at least according to Yahoo Finance, is $32.40. Now we will jump over to stockanalysis.com, another site, but I always recommend going to at least two sites to pull information. You know, the more sites, the better, so you can make sure the information that you are getting is accurate. And according to the 26 stock analysts, they've had to take a look at it. They call it a consensus buy. Now, if you do go to stockanalysis.com, that's this site, again, not affiliated, but if you were to touch each one of these, click on these with your mouse, you would be able to say how many of these 26 analysts call it a buy how many would call it a hold, how many might call it a sell, right? You'd be able to see that breakdown. But according to that, the majority of them are in the buy range, right? But they do have a low estimate of $19.19, .19, which would be a 18.24% decline. And to be honest, if it pulls back there, I would absolutely love it. I would just buy more at cheaper prices with higher yields and a higher future potential return, right? And then collect that, uh, probably closer to 5% or even higher than 5% dividend if it pulled back here. Average estimate is $33.10. That would be a 41.03% increase in stock price from where it currently sits. And if it happened to hit their high of $48.30, that would be a 105.79% increase. I don't know if you can see that or if my ugly mug there is in the way, but 105.79% increase. So they do potentially see a further pullback, but definitely see it going up in the long term. And banks, the financial sector in general, is one that initially will probably get hit pretty hard, which they are, which is why I'm buying banks right now, uh, or the financial sector in general. As the Fed raises rates, typically banks will get hit pretty hard. But then once rates normalize, right, you'll have some people that start to go out and get bank loans. You know, eventually people will have to buy new cars and buy new uh, homes and that sort of thing or get personal loans, whatever they're going to get, and they will start getting those loans at the higher rates. And that's when banks will benefit from the higher rates as people book those loans or, or uh, sign onto the dotted line there, so to speak, into those loans at the higher rate. Then banks going forward will lock in that higher rate and then that's whenever they will see the good returns, right? And we'll jump over to this slide. This is where I show you my position if I do have one. I am Long Ally. Like I said, I use them for my banking. So all my checking, my, my regular banking goes through Ally. I currently have 60 shares. Actually, I bought more today because they pulled back. I bought some last week. I'll buy some next week uh, probably as they pull back. I, I want to get this to probably like 120, 130, maybe 140 shares, and then I'll, I'll stop buying. I've been adding about 10 per week. They were. Ally Financial was one of the companies I had on my stocks to buy for December. Uh, I thought banks would pull back as the Fed continued to raise rate. I also thought the Fed would continue to raise rate. They did 0.5% uh, down a little bit from the 0.75. They've been raising it, but still raising it. I, I foresee them raising it into next year as well. I don't foresee them stopping until uh, interest or inflation starts coming down significantly. We need to see, you know, four, two, three, four quarters of interest rates coming down before I believe they'll stop raising rates. So I, I believe banks will continue get, to get hit hard until the Fed stops raising rates, and then they'll probably normalize. And then, like I said, as time goes on and people start booking those new loans, uh, banks will recover nicely. Now, my position is, like I said, I have 60 shares currently. I have $1,510.66 currently into this position. I am down 6.78%. I keep buying as it goes down. I, I keep decreasing this cost basis. My cost basis is $25.18 cents here. I've lost $101.86 and it's $23.48. So again, I'm hoping it stays in the red so I can continue to buy these at cheaper prices. They are a quarterly payer. They have a very low payout ratio, 19.2%. That's part of the reason that I bought them as well. But they also have that paired with a very high dividend growth rate, 36.36%. I believe this is one of the fastest dividend growth rates in my overall portfolio. So not only do they have a high dividend yield, they have a high dividend growth rate. And again, their last uh, payout was November 1st, right? Or November 15th, uh, rec record date was November 1st, and they do pay out 30 cents per share per quarter. Well, that is it. These are supposed to be quick hitters. That one ran a little bit long because I do uh, personally bank with Ally, so I wanted to touch on it a little bit more and give my personal experience and opinion with the company. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. If you're watching the videos and you haven't subscribed, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a dime. 
takes about a second and it really helps out a small YouTube channel like mine. All right, they do have algorithms out there. So the more you like the videos, share the videos, comment on the videos, the more this video will get uh, shared with other people and that will help me grow over time. Uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Ally. Are there other banks in your portfolio? I have other banks as well. Bank of America, Huntington Bank, uh, Prudential is another financial company that I like in my portfolio. So there are other banks out there as well. So let me know what your preferred bank is or what you use for your banking or your brokerage account. Love to hear that. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, suggestions for future topics or constructive criticism. Go ahead and drop it all down below. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, hope you have a great week. Christmas is coming up. So if you haven't finished your Christmas shopping, better get out there and get it done. I hate this time of the year. Any uh, store you seem to go into seems to be booked with booked, packed, full of people uh, trying to get their last minute shopping in. So if that's you, get out there and get it done. All right, we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion and investing your for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk. You can't lose money. You should never invest any amount you're not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and selected criteria, or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.